What I'm going to present today is a, is a new technology. Actually, it already is exists in the silicon, which is actually this is a chip uh, of uh, how we can do a, a similarity search in high throughput, a low latency, using associative technology. So, what I'm going to uh, first of all, we start to present the GSI technology, our company. Uh, What's the problem in big data similarity search? Uh, associative computing, talk about architecture, uh, how we do, for example, K nearest neighbor in the big data, uh, big data classification, and then talk about the software tools, and they show some uh, use case uh, examples. Okay, uh, GSI is a uh, it's a public company, uh, the headquarter in uh, Sunnyvale, California, uh, 150 employees. Uh, actually, in uh, GSI uh, developed uh, from uh, 2095 SRAM, SRAM memory, SRAM chip, commercial S SRAM chip. In uh, 2015, they acquired Mikamono, my company, uh, that we developed an associative technology we found a way how we can convert SRAM or any type of memory to do compute in the memory. So actually we take standard memory and converted it to be compute on the, on actually the basic instruction I just read and write. So it was a good merge. So GSI as this SRAM company, we come with an IP how we can convert memory to high speed computing. And then we come with a chip and a solution and the software of, uh, of in-memory uh, in compute. Uh, okay, big data similarity search. What we mean in big data similarity search? <coughs> we know once upon a time there was a fashion store that uh, somebody wants uh, some other else to recommend him for something. But the today trends is that instead of asking people, uh, uh, this woman want the, something which called AI to recommend some, for something because the AI can figure out all what she's like, what her friend like, uh, what her future boy, uh, boyfriend would like. She ha the AI should know everything and she wants to ask questions this AI. Actually, this is not an easy task because doing that, machine learning is not enough. Uh, we need something else to, to machine learning in order to support all this type of issue. Actually, there is a lot, a lot of data sitting in this AI that we have to negotiate with, with this data. So let's understand, first of all, is a concept. There is a client someone, a woman, and there is a cloud server uh, with items, big data item, a lot of items. In this, in this example, it's, it's a fashion. We know with the, she asks a question. She asks a question, for example, some recommendation. The AI of today, the AI algorithm of today can convert a question to feature vector, to a meaningful fingerprint. When she asks a question, there is an AI, I'm not going to, uh, to deep dive into it, but there is AI, the AI can convert my question to a meaningful question, a meaningful query. On the other side, there is a cloud server that there is the ability to take every item in the cloud server also using AI there is a lot of uh, Google, Google, uh, Google uh, 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 API that we convert everything to fingerprint based on artificial intelligence. For example, we can take any type of document, for example, a patent document, newspaper, book, convert it to 512-bit. A meaningful, it's, very, it's, it's a compressed by meaningful of the context. It's not exactly the text, it's the context of the text. It's a meaningful of the text. We can take a high resolution image and also using AI to convert it also to 512 bit, which is a meaningful of the face. Everything, speech, voice, everything can be converted to a meaningful. Later on, I'm going to explain how we, we do that. So 
this is what the AI can do. The AI, can, the AI actually is a feature extractor machine. So the AI converted it to a meaningful fingerprint and all the database is also converted to a meaningful fingerprint. So, so we don't need a lot of data to store in the memory. For example, if you can take a book, instead of representing a book in the memory, we can represent just its fingerprint. 5, 12 bit or 1K, depend. Then we can use similarity search technique to search between the fingerprint of the query to the fingerprint in the database. But this search, and of course, it can be speech, text, photo, as rush, it can, can be any type, any type, any type of, of query. But this search is not, it's not simple because this search have to be a search by content, similarity search. You not just write like standard search, you write a keyword and you want to find search based on this a keyword. Uh, the search here should be based on a, on a content-based search, which is not, it's not run efficiently on, on GPU, and of course on CPU, it run very slow. So that what, this is the gap that have to be filled in machine learning in order to do a very good similarity search between client to the server. So machine learning is an excellent feature extractor, but it's not classify, it's not good for classify big data. Similarity search engine is uh, filling the gap here. Now, uh, what we develop, it, we call it in, in memory, a classify server that have all this uh, issue here. So, uh, which is that we have the CPU and the Duran CPU or GPU can, can convert to a fingerprint the APU associative uh, processing unit can do the similarity search very efficiently, which I, 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 I explain how. And, and this part is done by offline because I have to take the database and convert it to a fingerprint. It's done offline, it's taken like days, weeks, whatever, but when it's done, it's done. Then when we come a new, new query, we use some inferencing to convert this query to fingerprint and do the similarity search and find, and find a, a, the top K. So similarity search, a visual search, similarity search is a critical component in many, many applications uh, for, uh, for visual search, uh, cybersecurity, bioinformatics, uh, automotive, uh, of, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, GSI have a client, uh, Weizmann Institute use similarity search to find a similar molecule, every molecule, whatever, what is size is converted also to 512 fingerprint bit. And then when the new drug is coming in, we convert it also to 512 bit and do the similarity search. Uh, seeing all uh, uh, user experience with similarities, for example, Netflix, uh, Facebook, uh, Spotify, uh, uh, Pinterest, uh, uh, Google, uh, all are looking for uh, for uh, similarities uh, for similarity search. Okay, actually the APU, which I explain uh, the technology how it work, uh, it have uh, it's a it's based on a, on a memory chip. It's a memory chip is that uh, can do very efficient uh, very efficient uh, uh, very efficient similarity search and uh, and uh, computation. Uh, with low power. So actually the chip, instead of refusing, uh, receiving address or, a, a, or a data from a memory, it get a query, do the operation, and write back, uh, and write back uh, uh, the answer. Uh, so uh, associative computing is fundamental uh, for today, uh, demanding a uh, word. Uh, we can't rely on CPU and GPU alone. So we need something like intelligent cache, intelligent memory that they can do the computing memory with low power and low latency, such as associative, associative uh, processing. Before going to the application, let me take a few minutes to explain what is associative memory how we take a standard memory and convert it to, uh, to a compute with high speed, low power, low latency. 
Okay, this is the way how memory works today. It doesn't change 80 years, 90 years. We have the memory, we have the ALU, we have the address decoder. The ALU send, uh, send uh, open some read, uh, some read enabled from one uh, of the line. We read the data to the ALU, do the computation, and write back to the memory. So, same is in GPU, CPU, whatever, parallel computing. We know that what we know is that memory can do just read and write. It can do addition, multiplication, floating point. It just read and write. The blocks that do all the operation is a CPU. Parallel computing, we have many CPUs, a lot of memory, but the memory just read and write. Now I'm going to show you how with the read and write, we do multiplication, we do similarity search, we do floating point, we do deep learning. Everything is in memory with two instructions, read and write, that's it. We can do all the operation in read write. I'm not talking on the memory that on top of it, inside there is some small ALU. The memory itself is compute. There is a lot of hidden uh, feature in current memories that we can enable them to do compute. That's what I'm going to show now. So now let's look different. We have here a memory. We have a data in the memory. What is compute? I want to take this data to manipulate this data and write back to different locations in the memory. Everything's in memory. I don't want that the APU will take, uh, sorry, the CPU will take those two words, do some manipulation and write back. I want everything in the memory. So what we know today is that memory stores the data we can access the memory by an address. I, can, I ask the memory, give me what you have in location number five. Whatever it is, I take it, the CPU take it, do, computer, do computation, and write result to location number 10. Then give me what is in location number 12, etc., etc. Now, what will happen if we change a little bit the memory architecture, and instead of asking the memory, read location number five, I will ask the memory, give me location number five and location number 10 at the same time. Give me whatever you have there. <laughs> so what will happen, I open, I just change the address decoder, I just open those two a two-bit line. So here there is a one, here there is a zero, all in the same bit line, what I will get? Zero, one, I get, I will not get the right answer because all are the same bit line. And this I open to write. So I want to write all this garbage which I receive here directly to here. What I will get here? So if you look deeply on how the memories work, so nobody figure it, so I'm glad that we have, we found it if only a few years ago and we have uh, um, tens of patent on this <laughs> idea that we get the NAND operation. We get NAND operation. NAND operation is a logic operation. Actually, it depends on the type of the memory. Some memory is NAND, some memory is no, some memory, but we can, we have a logic. So if we read a memory in one location, it's a memory, standard memory. To read from two locations is the NAND of two input. To read from three locations is the NAND of three input. Because we get some uh, logic operation, which is not, ex is not the original data, so why should we write it to the CPU? We just keep it in here in the memory and then read it again and again until we get the result. So this is a concept of the computational memory uh, that we can do here. So actually, uh, so every bit line is look, like, uh, is look like a memory. So in this chip, we have two million Processors, two million processors, two million bit line. We can do in parallel two million, two million logic, two million logic operation in one clock. It's like two peta operation per second. For example, we want to do XOR for the input, 
to do search in two peta operations per second in, in, this, uh, in this chip. Okay, so, so bus contention is not an error. We know based on the Morgan law, if we can do nor on end, we can do, we can satisfy all type, all type of, of, uh, of operations. So let's take an example. Suppose we have a truth table A, B, C. This is the input, and this is the output. This means that for input 0, 0, 1, we want that the output will be 0. For input 0, 1, uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, we want that the output will be 1. So this is, this is actually a truth table that implement in logic, in computer, it implement in logic. So. This is, if I do Carnot, if you're familiar with Carnot table, this is a Carnot tables uh, of that, what, which is not A, not C, plus B and C. But on the Morgan law, I want to convert this all to an end. So this is converted to an end, and then by two re uh, read A not, C not, and write, read B and C and write, this is one clock, and the second clock, I merge between them and get the result. So, with two sets of read and write, I implement the truth table. So, actually, actually, this chip is a Carnot table, a parallel Carnot table implementer. Okay, on top of that, uh, we wrote the microcode uh, uh, um, and software and all the layers of software that we talk later on how, how we uh, implement uh, uh, all function arithmetics, etc. Okay. Another example, suppose we have, uh, we have two vectors, A and B, each of 8 bit. Uh, to, uh, each of eight bits, the size of the vector is 30 is uh, 32 million. We, have, we want to add, we take a 32 million number, we want to add with another 32 million number. Uh, so what we get, we start with all the 32 million least significant bit of A and B. We implement, I show that we can do, implement truth table. So we implement the truth table of full header. And we write the result to another location in the memory to here. And then we go to the next bit. So uh, after, after uh, eight iteration, because we have eight bit, if you looked on the full header uh, truth table, we need a, a, a four, there are four states, uh, four conditions. Uh, we have to change the four state, to, uh, state four times. So it's 32 clocks. So if we have 32 million bit lines, so we can get one peta, uh, uh, one peta operation per second. Uh, in the single chip with two megabit line, we have 30, 30 tera ops uh, of, uh, of uh, addition. Uh, actually, we can look on, uh, uh, we can look on, the, on the memory uh, as a bit line a, a, a processor, we can look at every bit line, we can look it as a vector A, vector B, and here we can do any type, any type, uh, any type of, of operation. We can also take one section, shift it to the left and to the right. Before the operation, by this we can do convolution, neighborhood operation. Uh, similarity search, uh, we have a data in associative, in associative memory, we have a query which is a fingerprint, let's say, of a face, and this is, every bit line is a different face of a fingerprint. As I told you, we can represent faces in 512 bit. This is an example, this is one face, second face, third face, another face, or molecule, or document, uh, or music, whatever. We get this number based on, on deep learning. We do similarity search very fast, we get the distance, and we found the top K and output the, and output, uh, the top K. So in a single chip, we can do uh, 100,000 uh, uh, queries per second for a, a 128K uh, K record. For example, if we would like to do face recognition based on this technology, in this chip, we can put 128,000 people, actually a city, <laughs> uh, and search uh, in 100,000 100, uh, queries per second in a in, in single chip based on associative technology. And because it's in the memory, the power is very low. It's less than 10 watts. Uh, 
we are, what we want to say, we are not complete NVIDIA. <laughs> we are not complete with GPU. We are not going to more that change the GPU. We are complementary uh, to the GPU because we cannot complete with floating point operation. As you, can, as you see in the example before, if we work on high precision, it becomes uh, uh, slower. So uh, we are in teraflops, we are in a in range of one teraflops and GPU is, is more than 10 teraflops. But to do similarity search in top K and find softmax, non-linearity, a, a, a low power scal scalability, uh, we, uh, the APU is better than the CPU and GPU. Uh, a comparison between CPU, GPU uh, to interest to the APU. Uh, first of all, in CPU, GPU, we have to send an address to the memory. And here, which is very, very important for, for similarity search, that we search by content. We don't have to search by address. In CPU, we fetch the data from memory and send it to the processor. Here, we, we mark in place and then we do the compute. In CPU, we compute seri uh, serially per core, depend how many cores, thousand. Or here, we compute in place to millions of, uh, of processors. Write data back to the memory, uh, uh, wasting I/O resources. No need to write back because the result is already in the memory. Send data to each location that need it. If needed, distribute or broadcast at once. So this is the benefit of in-place uh, uh, computing. If you looked on the architecture, actually this is the layout of the chip. Actually, you see here uh, here a memory, which is every. Every core, like this uh, uh, half core, we call it. This is a, this actually this is a core with an ARC serial processor control. Uh, those two blocks, each core have two fifty six uh, million bit line bit line uh, processors. Uh, we can uh, we can process uh, from two teraflops to two peta operation per second. Uh, this is the cores. And this is how it looks like it's connected to, to an FPGA that uh, for interface to PCI, peripheral, DRAM, etc. So this is actually very simple, very simple architecture, and this is and, and this is exist uh, uh, on the board. If we if if we compare it to a, a, to a GPU, a GPU has a different block for every function. Here we don't have to lose uh, space because every cell its memory can be programmed to do floating point. If somebody don't want floating point 64, it just lose space, uh, space here. And uh, here how the data, for example, the centers of presentation, so we can store the fingerprint uh, in the memory. Uh, so in, in a, in this, in a, in several, in several architecture, we have uh, a multiple, a multiple uh, card uh, with a memory that we can manage. Uh, we can do similarity search for uh, big data. Uh, everything is in place in um, uh, micro. Uh, Yov, what's the name of the server? It's micro, super, super micro. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's super micro. It's super micro server. And actually, this is a super micro server, and, and, and this is the chip, and this is a, this is F, uh, this is the FPGA, and and the memory. Actually, you, you can we can demo. It's already there and uh, 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 demonstrated. Okay, uh, let's see the K nearest neighbor. How we do K nearest neighbor? Suppose we have a data, uh, we have uh, divided into three groups. A red, red, green, it's not like a blue, two dimensional, and we have a new query. When we say, uh, give me top K, this means a find is the closest four, top four, for example, closest four items and give me the majority. Uh, after we found the majority, we found, okay, this is close to the, uh, to the black, to the brown. Uh, it's actually, it's green, uh, to the green one. How it's implemented in associative? In associative, we have a, every row is a bit line. We, first of all, store all the items, all the fingerprints. As I said, every, every, 
uh, every bit line can store a different uh, fingerprint, like uh, faces, document, etc. Uh, we are insert, we distribute uh, the query. Uh, because we can do NAND and NOR, we can do all type of operation in the library. So we can implement similarity search. So there are many type of search distance. Uh, cosine similarity, Tanemoto, Hamming distance, all type of, uh, of search, and uh, find, uh, find the top K, uh, implicit ranking, and output the majority. So everything is done, is done in, a, in a single chip. Uh, the good thing is that because it's memory based, we can do similarity search to, to hundreds of thousands to millions of records in parallel. Okay, big data classification. Let's uh, go back a little bit to explain what it is uh, a, a deep learning. In deep learning, actually, this figure represents, for example, we have a face, and there is several stages. You start with RGB image, and ended here, and ended here with a, a and ended here with a, uh, with, a, with a feature. So actually start first layer. Every layer we can have different features. We, here we have edges, a combination of edges, uh, features, and then we can say, okay, uh, this is the human face. Uh, what is the percentage of the human face? What is the percentage that is a dog, a cat, or, uh, or uh, whatever? So uh, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is a deep learning. So here it is. So, for example, when we input input the face here, uh, we get we got here the RGB, and this is get uh, activation based on the face. Every layer get a different different activation, and then by the end we said, okay, it's ninety five percent a human face, one percent a dog, and one percent a cat, but ninety yeah. How is it doing a neural net if you can't do matrix multiplies? Right. No, no, I just, I don't explain how we do, we do neural net. First of all, we don't do the neural net. What do you say with the neural net? We, we do, this chip can do one teraflops floating point. This cannot compete NVIDIA. We, we are do very fast similarity search or not floating point. I, the neural net is done by CPU, GP. We do the similarity search, okay? okay? So. I want, first of all, to explain the problem of neural network. What I want to say, we don't need a lot of neural network uh, uh, for big data classification. Because what we get here, we get that we have 95% human face. Okay, so what a human face. But if I have million of people that I want to identify, I don't want to say that this is a human face. In deep learning, we can classify up to thousands, not billion. I cannot put here, Billion, uh, a, a billion nodes, and for every face in the world, I can find this is 90% me, 90%, 95% you. This cannot be done in neural network. Neural network can classify up to thousands. That's it. So we need more. We need million, billion for big data. We cannot train all the big data. It's, it's, it's impossible. This is the reason why, uh, for example, I think, why uh, NVIDIA acquired Mellanox because they want to distribute all the different computers around the world uh, to do training. Because it's not an easy to, to train more than 5,000. Another problem in deep learning, suppose we already trained car, dogs, and horses. Now if we have a new item here, what should we do? Should we do retrain another two days or a week to train a new items? So update is very, very complicated in, in standard deep learning. So deep learning is not enough. So in deep learning, we have, in order to train, we have to train, for example, cat, we need a database to train five, we need 5,000 cat to train that is a cat. We need a set of 5,000 dogs to train that is a dog. 5,000 table, 5,000 faces to say that just is a human faces. And we have only thousands of categories. 
in a human brain, in a human brain, when somebody tell me when I was young, this is a dog. Nobody say me five thousand dog, five thousand cat, five thousand table. It's one shot, one dog, one cat. First time I told me the dog. Okay, then I saw a cat. I said, "This is a dog." No, this is a cat. Okay, it is a cat because our brain already pre-trained when we when we were born. Then we can do just finding tuning. So thousands of sample, few categories. One sample, billions of categories. And associative computing, like people, can measure similarity set to feature store in memory and can create new neighbor for similarity. So in associative computing, we can identify billion, and I show you now how we can do that, how we solve this problem with associative computing. Example for billion item classification in the case of visual search. For example, take, take eBay example. I want to take an image I want to find for billions of items. And of course, eBay, Walmart, all of them start doing similarity search, not just doing deep learning. Natural language processing, patents. Uh, uh, you, have, you want to write something, and you want, let's say, in less than one second to find if your idea within all the million of items, somebody has the same idea. Not wait one month to pay $1,000. You want just to write and find immediately if somebody writes something similar claim. This is an associative computing. In a, so you can do that. In CPU, GPU, you cannot do that. Now I'll show you. Let's go back. Now let's see how we solve this problem of, of, a, of a classification of billions. Let's go back to the previous example. We have the face and we say that it's 95% a human face. But we don't want a human face. We want Tom, Sharon, John, many, million, billion. How can you do that? So what it's done is that if we just, if we looked here, here, is a percentage. Here you get maybe 0 0.95 and uh, say 95% is a face. But, but how this input is coming in? It's coming in from combination of, of all this input. And this comes from the combination of this input. And this comes from of, of this input. But if we just remove that and just looked on that, we call this a fingerprint, a feature. So. Now, if we don't put here this face, we can put, let's say, image of a table on this pre-trained. Let's say it's already trained on ImageNet. Already trained. Stanford, Google, already trained. Now we put another image that, is, that it didn't train. For example, put here a table or put another face. I'm not looking here. I'm not saying how many percentage is a table. I looked on this feature. I get here different number to every feature. If I put it another woman, I get another another feature. This is a signature. This is a fingerprint. Yes. No, it's not cat. When when I put cat. I get your numbers, I call it fingerprint, and tag it as a cat, okay? And put it in the database. That's then- People that, that, will have 10 different fingerprints, right? Hmm? But 10 people may have the same fingerprint, right? No. 10 human faces. No, human different, human every face, human one fingerprint, we show an example. You only have like 512 bits. In, five, in 512 bit, every face we need one, face, one face in the database. I'll show you now it's working. One face in the database, and when they come in, you can, in, in a profile, everything, you, you catch it. One face, 512, it depends. It's 512 or 2K or 1K. Uh, for example, eBay, eBay, what they do in deep learning, they take all this one billion uh, uh, database, use the deep learning to convert to 5,000 categories, that's it and use similarity search and fingerprint for every category to, let's say, to millions of, millions of, millions of items. Sorry, just one question. 
<laughs> so what you're saying is because you've got two to the 500 probabilities, yeah. you almost never get collisions, is that right? Yeah, I think that's the reason. So there's, yeah. far, there's far too many combinations for different signatures versus people in the Yes, world. yes, yeah. So it's just a, so you could theoretically get a collision, it's just unlikely. The yeah, you, you would say you would say it's very small. So this is reason that you play with with a number, and it's sometimes it's one k bit, two k bit. But actually, the origin here is a floating point, and you use LSH to convert it to a binary. So yeah. now, all this one billion already pre. Trend and not pre-trend. Oh, uh, we do the inferencing convert to a feature. This is in the database. This has come online, and we do uh, and define the minimum distance. And we find so there, I'm not training that this is my colleague Yoav, uh, that it's Yoav. I just put an image that looks similarity. Fine. What's written in the tag? Mr. Yoav. So it's Yoav. Put another image, find similarity, look at that. What is written in a table? Okay, this is a table. That's it. I'm not training that. I do similarity search. Okay, a thousand to billion of different items, so based on pre-trained network. Ideal for, for similarity search. Now, let's say an example of face recognition, how it works. We do a face detection. This is done. By, by, the, by the GPU. Of course, if we talk on, let's say, on uh, hundreds of uh, queries per second, we can do it also in the APU, but it's better to do it, to do it in, the, in the GPU. Uh, we do face, uh, face, det uh, face uh, alignment, uh, detection, face alignment, and feature extractor, and this we get, get 128 float, and we convert using LSH to 512 up to 2K, uh, 2K bit. And, uh, and we already have, uh, have uh, pre-tagged all the faces, uh, let's say 1,000 uh, thousand or 100 of 1,000, and we do similarity search and identify. So this is done by the APU. All the rest is done by the, by the GPU. As I told you, we're not compete with the GPU. We're complementary uh, to the P CPU. We'd like that people use the same card next to the, next to the GPU to, to complete all the picture of in-memory AI, etc. Uh, also, this is a face. We check everything. We can do items, molecules. Molecules, we have now a client that take molecules, converted and find very efficient uh, molecules. Document, we just tried, I just tried last week, based on that, everything is new, just tried last week. We took all our patent uh, portfolio in the company, we have uh, thousands of uh, do uh, documents, uh, converted to uh, sentences, let's say to hundreds of thousands of sentences, each sentence, it can be one line, 10 lines, whatever. We convert it to 512 bit. Put it in the memory. And then we just write some, uh, what is our invention. And after a few microseconds, the memory told us that your claim is similar to somebody which the examiner told us before. So, <laughs> so very, very interesting. Another thing that the beauty of that it's compressed because it, when we want to do standard search, we need the full document in the database, the full image in the database, the full clip in the database. What we like to search is a semantic. So it's actually, a, it's, of course, it's really compressed. You take a book and compress it to 512 bit. It's really compressed. And you can put all these items, all this data, which can be billion, billion by 512 bit to 512 billion bits, it's nothing. It can be installed in standard DRAM in memory, in, in memory server. And then you use uh, a GPU to do inferencing and APU to do similarity search, and you can you have a very efficient system for similarity search. Uh, this is an example of, uh, of uh, uh, this, is a, uh, uh, this is a query, a condolarize. Uh, actually, uh, this is a, a, we took all the database of Celeb, which is 12,000, uh, 13,000, uh, 13,000, 13,000 uh, uh, images. 
So on those time, Obama was not a celeb, so <laughs> he's the closest one. So, but uh, you can see a demo uh, 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 right there. Okay, uh, in memory for a big data similarity search. So as you can say, we can show, uh, we can do uh, uh, all of that. Uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, one example how we can manage 64, for example, we have database of 64 million items. 64 million items I want to, I want to, uh, uh, to identify uh, in a single chip, for example. So I can divide it the 64 million, 64 million is 64,000 by 1,000. So first of all, I do a K nearest, a K, uh, I do a K means and divide it into, into a 64, uh, two, sorry, to 64,000 centroid, each centroid is connected to 1,000. So I, I preload all the centroid in half of the memory, in part of the memory, and when we have a query, we found the top K. In the DRAM, we have all the database, let's say billions of uh, item, people, whatever, and we, have, we can uh, find, uh, we take, we find the top K, each one uh, connected to 1,000, to bring in here and find, and find the similarity search. Uh, of course, we can, uh, uh, in, a, in a system, we can support 256 million, million, million record, or 1 billion record, depending on uh, multiple car, multi-server, uh, et cetera. Uh, okay, software tool, uh, uh, Yoav is my colleague, he will... Okay, yes. It's based on content of similar. No, a cam, cam, t cam is exact search. Yeah. Here it is similarity, cosine similarity. Hemming, it's like hemming distance, it's like cosine similarity, Tanemoto, it's not exact search. I don't show you, here we can do t cam. Of course, t cam, uh, don't care, it's wrong. Yeah, but it can, uh, how we present the fingerprint when you have another fingerprint. What, I, oh, I forgot that when I said similarity search, when you have a fingerprint 512 bit, it's not exactly the same 512 bit. You find the closest one from the database. You find which is close, let's say 95% close, or the best closer to what in the database. You read on, on the tag and say it is. Okay. Excuse me? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we use cosine similarity. For cosines, we do floating point because it's very easy uh, in the memory. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've done, uh, talked about the technology, talked about uh, the ASIC, and uh, what, uh, uh, we, what is the main IP of, of the associate computing. Now, uh, I would like to uh, explain how can we use it. What is the way to, to use this uh, similarity search engine and integrate it into end-to-end -end solution that uh, everyone that would like to use it ca can use it. So, first of all, uh, the idea is that uh, we uh, developed an uh, APU board. APU board is a PCIe board that can be uh, installed in any server that exists in the market. It's sort of based on a, on a Peta Linux. We have a Linux running on, on the board, but uh, the end customer does not need to know uh, what, what is here. It is a firmware. It's like a, a, a black box. Above uh, the APU board, we have uh, the driver. Uh, it's a Linux driver that run, run uh, on, uh, on a host, on any, any x86 uh, machine, Ubuntu. Uh, Linux Ubuntu, or Linux Red Hat, uh, we test it. And uh, the idea is that above uh, the driver, we have the GNL, which is our mathematical uh, uh, libraries. The, mathemat the mathematical libraries that we implement here is uh, you know, a lot of uh, basic functionality, including uh, matrix uh, multipl multiplication, uh, floating point activity, uh, multiplication, and a uh, lot of uh, lib uh, libra uh, mathematical library that uh, it can run as a uh, mathematical coprocessor. 
Now, in order to, to have it uh, as, a, as a similarity search, uh, similarity search engine, uh, we can run it in, in, a, in a two way. One, we have an interface to the, directly to the, uh, to the uh, mathematical library with the edge file interface or, uh, or Python uh, API interface that uh, if you would like to run uh, on uh, one, uh, on one uh, board, you would like to run a mathematical functionality, any mathematical functionality, you can call the, the GNN and run it on one board. Now, if you would like to have uh, more than one board, you, if you would like to have uh, to, to work in, in, a, in a way that uh, give you uh, APIs to, uh, to, to any uh, third-party application like uh, TensorFlow, <coughs> like a phase as a benchmark, like a Apache Sparks. Then you need to, to go via our system management APIs that can manage one or more board. Uh, in the view of the system management, basically all of these uh, things are one big similarity search engine. You don't know about it if it's, a, it's just a matter of resources. You, you just need to know how many resources you would like to allocate for, you, for the similarity search that you would like to run. And based on that, we have the resource <coughs> management services that give you the ability to verify that you have enough resources to run it. We have the search service that can run and split the search between multiple <laughs> boards, so you can do it in parallel, you can faster it in uh, multiple boards. So if, for example, if uh, one search will take you, I don't know, uh, three, 300 milliseconds in, in, a, in, a, in a one APU, you can split it into four, and then you get less than 100 milliseconds for getting all the, all the, all the uh, top K results. And uh, of course, all the numerical services that, that uh, you also can, can, uh, can uh, activate and use in multiple boards. Sure, sure. The, yeah. idea, the idea of this one is that you have a standard API. The API is C++, Python, REST API. You just need to, to write above it, and you have, you have the ability to, to use all the uh, multiple APU boards it's a, it's a hardware that you don't know exactly what is it, it just gives you the functionality that you get from the API. The good thing also is that you can run it, that you can run your program about TensorFlow, and you, we have to give you the connection directly to, the, to all this uh, server, and this gives you the ability to run all the existing applications that you're running above TensorFlow uh, using our hardware. The same thing with uh, Apache Sparse. We have also uh, what we call the, the, the APU uh, search application, which is a demo that we write and give, the, give us the ability to, to show how we are doing the similarity search in face recognition, visual search, uh, compound search, and the uh, NLP. And of course, any other end-to-end -end application that, uh, that uh, we'd like to run above our, our software and use our software as a similarity search engine, because we are not doing everything, we're just doing the similarity search. We want to replace this, the existing similarity search engine that exists now, and using, you are using it now, and you want to use our engine as part of it, then we just need to integrate it. It's a simple integration. We did it with a uh, few, uh, few uh, applications like the uh, Biovia of uh, Pipeline Pilot for molecular search, or uh, Nine, and uh, we are now uh, starting the, the integration with the Apache Sparks as well. So this is the engine uh, that we, this okay. is the software stack that we are working. Thanks. So any, any, anyone that would like to use it, it's just a, an API to, to use it, or running it about okay. Okay, so uh, as you see, we have the, uh, G the view, the driver, the numerical library. Above the numerical library, we have the API for the numerical, numerical library, as I explained before. And then the idea is that you have, you can load the database. Yeah. You can load the database. You do the similarity search, getting the result, and. Remember, if everything is in memory, if the size of the database, if you split the database in a multiple APU, and all the, uh, and, uh, the overall database is sitting in the APU itself, the time to do this, the multiple similarity search, not one, to do multiple yep. similarity search, yep. 10 microseconds. Uh, just uh, in use case, uh, an example, for example, we have uh, for Weizmann Institute, uh, they, we have actually a product in the in Weizmann Institute for drug discovery, Database 38 million uh, divided by 12 bit. Uh, we search in uh, two millis uh, 12 millisecond versus uh, six. This is in, in a single chip. In one core, with this core, we have four cores. One core of the chip in 500 megahertz is not one one gig. Run, run. 
in the 12 second versus to, six, uh, versus to, uh, versus to 16 minutes, one, uh, 20, uh, one K bit, which gave a, a significant performance, uh, can run in 24 seconds, it's ended, just trashed. Uh, uh, this is a prototype chip on commercial chip, we can do it instead of 12, uh, 0 0.4 seconds uh, for a one hand query, the chip just come yesterday, and we're going, we're going to put it in a card for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the next month. Uh, last slide, current application, visual search, face recognition, molecule search, a document. We are in research in recommendation because if, if uh, somebody, uh, I have similarities so somebody that, that likes something, he can give a recommendation. Also video search, we can take a video clip for a few, few, uh, few milliseconds or few frames and convert it to fingerprint and find Find uh, uh, and go to find a uh, 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 faces a uh, video. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, questions or is that a sorry? So it's part of the API. Is that the, the uh, populating the APU with the uh, fingerprints? Is that part of the API? Yes. 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 Exactly. The API gives you the, the ability to load the database, to load the query, run the, get the task of similarity search, get the result. Yes. Uh, my question is, why are you basically based in Israel or just uh, Okay, in, in uh, the main, uh, the headquarters in California, in Israel, we are 50 people from the 160 developing uh, the algorithm and uh, software and hardware in, in California. Okay, thank you.